Hey there, brothers and sisters. Timothy here with The Way of the Rope. In today's video, I'm going to do something slightly different as it's a new year, and I want to list the five tools or piece of gym equipment that I anticipate myself using the most in the coming year in 2023. And as I go, I'll obviously be covering a bit about how I'm going to be using them and also why. So let's get started, shall we? So to start things off, number five, and these are in a particular order, we begin with the sandbag. Or to be slightly more precise, the Atlas ball, which sits somewhere between the Atlas stone, which is a dense piece of round spherical rock, and a sandbag, which can be a bit too malleable for my liking. I like the Atlas ball sits somewhere perfectly in the middle. Whilst you won't find the maximum digits that you'll ever lift when trying to lift a sandbag, what you will do is find maximum recruitment of many of the muscles and fibers throughout the whole of the body. When trying to lift one of these things off the floor, the amount of recruitment that goes on in the upper body, which is completely bypassed when it comes to barbell lifting, is really a wonderful thing to experience. And because of this limitation on the maximum weight you can lift, it feels like a lot more authentic and organic type of lifting. One of the things I love about these is the simplicity. There's not loads of exercises that can be done with such an awkward obstacle. Simply lifting off the floor to chest or to throw it over your shoulder is an incredible exercise in itself. You can do squats with it and the roundedness really puts you on this internal torque chain as you go and simply just carrying and going for a walk with it, pressed into your stomach, limiting your breathing, learning to breathe into more of the ribcage than just the stomach while the core is contracted. There's a lot of bang for a little bit of book with this tool. Number four and next up on our list, we have another spherical object. This time, instead of being filled with sand, it's filled with nothing. It's filled with air. The Swiss ball. Those that know me know I love this piece of equipment. Now, compared to traditional strength training, which is done through a range of motion where a muscle will contract, what I love about the Swiss ball is I still consider it strength training. I consider it lateral joint strength training. So a joint will hold a range of motion, a position, and it will be tested side to, at a side to side angle, the wobble angle, rather than up and down, which we traditionally see as strength training, we're testing it this way. And so you will still get DOMS, the muscles, the fibers will still be recruited and still be tested, but more in a fixed range. And along with that being an incredible way to strengthen our joints and become more stable in the body, it's also very fun. And I think it's actually hardwired in us to want to test our balance from a young age, we want to play how many of us have held a child or a niece or a nephew hand while they've balanced along a wall or a railing. As we get older, we kind of forget this, we neglect this, we focus on other fitness challenges when it's in us to enjoy and seek a balance challenge. And there's not much more simple way to do that in my eyes in the gym than to get on a Swiss ball. And there's not an adult that I've got on a Swiss ball who hasn't enjoyed themselves when they've played with the, with the series of exercises I've put to them. One of the other reasons I really love the Swiss ball is how forgiving it is. Because it is a rubber object, it will meet your joint at the range that it is comfortable at. As opposed to the floor, where you do stretching on another hard surface, the body like kind of locks up. When it reaches the hard surface, the joint says, that is my range. And there's this kind of standoff between the joint and the stretch. On the Swiss ball, it is much more forgiving. If the joint needs a bit more range, it will just push into the rubber. Now, if you want to see more of the Swiss ball, I did just do a video on that. So I'll link that below where I go into why I love the Swiss ball and exercises to do on it in a lot more detail. As I mentioned in that other video as well, how much it's helped the health of my knees. When you can do stuff like this, as I say, the rubber of the Swiss ball is very forgiving and it helps you work at the healthy range for your joints. Number three, well, what do you know? Another spherical object, this time, one made out of cold hard steel and they've put a handle on it. That is the kettlebell. There are many reasons I love the kettlebell. One, it will get you feeling very strong very quickly. As you're swinging an object where the center of mass is outside of your body, the amount of muscle recruitment as well as tendons and ligaments that get involved from your fingertips right to your core just gets the whole body working in a very nice holistic way. We call this a ballistic strength. There's like a rhythm and a flow as you swing the weight kind of gently becomes heavier and then you control it and then you swing it and it becomes lighter. It's not just like all or nothing ramped up. There's a beautiful flow to the kettlebell that's actually really fun to play with. And when we swing it about, it is just an enjoyable thing to do. As well as that, it's very accessible for people. You can have a, a couple of weights of kettlebells at home 
and you can put, apply so much variety to those weights that you can get such full body workout, full body strength. When I say full body, I mean full body. Everything from the grip in your fingertips to your core, to your glutes, to your hamstrings, everything gets involved when we're swinging a kettlebell, if we use it intelligently. We can do everything as well from kind of bilateral training, two hands on it, two legs, swinging the bell, glute driving through, two more biomechanical with a lighter, safer weight. We can apply coils to the angles that we're doing it, put ourselves in these gyroscopic tilts as we're swinging the bell, which have a lot more athletic carryover and trainers on these patterns. One of the exercises that I really love, as well as the traditional swing, is just the Turkish get up. Every day, one of the hardest things we do is get out of bed, right? And if you can get off the floor with a heavy weight in your hands, well, that's gonna make getting out of bed in the morning a whole lot easier. And I know stories from the strongman back in the day, when someone wanted to train up to be an apprentice strongman with the already established strongmen, they said, okay, when you can get up off the floor with 70 pounds in your hands, with 100 pounds in your hand, then I will take you on. So just as a, a human challenge, Getting from the ground, from lying horizontal to being vertical with a heavy weight in your hands is such a simple way to teach the body to become strong, how to stack our weight, how to use our bones and not just muscle our way through things. And just like the Swiss ball, as I mentioned, it's a lot of fun. Humans like to swing things about. It's something in our, in our DNA that's enjoyable. When we play sports, how many sports involve swinging? When we dance, we swing our limbs. <laughs> we enjoy swinging. It is literally hardwired into us. So when you're swinging a kettlebell and you're able to start swinging heavier weights, there's something having control over a big weight and the use of momentum and these patterns and pathways that it teaches us as we go is really enjoyable. It's not just the body getting involved, the mind's involved, the soul's involved, the spirit's involved when we're enjoying it as well. So if you've not tried it yet, 2023 could be a good year to start swinging a bell about. So number five, four, and three were all spherical objects. Number two, this time it's not a sphere. I'm sure you knew this was gonna be on the list at some point, it is of course a quality piece of rope. Now I'm sure many people watching this video are already very familiar with the power of adding a rope flow practice to their training and having the, a piece of rope as a tool in their tool bag for every session that they do pretty much, that's how I use it. For me, as someone who loves to watch sport and love to watch athletes top of the game excel and to see what the, how they move differently to some of the other athletes, I believe there is a missing link in order to help most or many athletes move a lot more fluidly like the top athletes, like the Jordans, like the Lionel Messi's and for me, that is a rope flow practice. This piece of equipment teaches us and allows us to practice over and over again in a very short space of time, rack up repetitions of perfect positions and patterns of movement. As we move from balance position to balance position, we're able to work on our footwork, we're able to practice sinking the rib cage and the pelvis up. All movement originates from the core, from the spine, outwards to the limbs. And what we can do is, with a practice like the rope flow. We can practice these angles, these gyroscopic athletic positions that allow us to chop and change as we're dodging the rope and the rope is literally, we're following the way of the rope as we move that puts us on these paths. There is so much versatility to be done with a simple piece of rope that can carry over from the training room to the field of play, where we do, where we do our sport, where we play, where we dance, whatever it is we want to do. The crossover from this is, can, can only be experienced to be understood, to be honest, and I'm sure, like I said, most people watching this already know. If you don't know, this channel is pretty much dedicated mostly to rope flow and to spreading awareness of what a powerful practice David Weck brought to the world with this. If you've not started your rope flow journey, the best place I'd say the eight week to fluidity course on our website, the course I created for anyone to get into rope flow from complete beginner up into a footwork finesse fanatic. We also sell high quality ropes as well for you to get started on that journey. But essentially an unbelievable piece of equipment that's gonna stay with me since discovering it three years ago for the rest of my life in my tool bag, <laughs> not going anywhere. And I continue to get deeper in my practice and study of it and discovering more and more carryover to sports from the rope. It also complements really well with the other tools I've mentioned, especially the patterns with the kettlebell and the rope. There's a lot of crossover. If you're watching this video and you've not got a rope in your practice, well, I don't know how you've got this far without doing it, but 2023 is a good chance to start your rope flow game. And so here we have it, folks, the number one piece of equipment that I, Tim Sheaf, will be doing my best to utilize and maximize as I go into the gym and train in 2023 
is in this frame, in this shot here, sort of. It's multidimensional. It is my mind. So what do I mean when I say I'm going to be using my mind as a tool when I enter the gym this year? Well, there's many ways to take it. One is how not to use the mind or how, how many people, they go into the gym and they sort of mindlessly go through the motions, they put headphones in, they put music, they watch a monitor and they're disconnected from the body. Now what I want to be doing is using my mind to connect with my body first and foremost. So as I'm training, I'm feeling, I'm tuning in to the motions. I'm trying to sense, there's something I call the feather barrier, which is the boundary between when the body locks up and when it is completely relaxed. And that's where I feel that work to progress is done. And for most of us, I think that position, finding the feather barrier is a lot of a less intense training stimulus than the way most of us train. So as well as feeling into the muscles, as well as, as taking my time, going slow, if anyone familiar with my Mindful Warrior program from a few years ago, where I'm very focused and there's a lot of attention and intention going into every single movement. So as well as a mindful approach to internally sensing and feeling the movements as I do them, I'm also going to be having a very Max Alding style approach to my training where I take inspiration from the characters like Maxic himself, legend of the past, and Montesaldo, people like Billy Ralph who were very focused on a mind-muscle connection when they're training, first and foremost. Your body is an instrument and to learn to play the instrument, in my eyes, we need to learn to play the keys that make up the chords. And for me, the keys are the individual muscles. So as, as well as the rope flow, the kettlebells, the swinging, the full body practices and, and movements that we're going to be going through, I also want to train isolated. This is the both sides utilize effect. So we train the, the whole body as a package. We also know that the whole is the sum of its parts. So isolated muscular training, Maxic style mind muscle connection. So here's a very quick example of how Maxic would train. If you at home right now, Squeeze your bicep, give, yourself, give me a bicep squeeze. Many of you might be squeezing the hand, you might be squeezing the shoulder, everything's going into the bicep squeeze. What I want you to do now is can you relax the hand and keep the bicep contracted? Can you relax the shoulder and the lat and keep the bicep contracted? Can you relax the pec, whatever's involved? Can you focus on just the bicep being the one contracted and send the mind to the muscles that are contracted and be like, why are you contracted? And consciously switch it off. And this was the crux of Maxix's training and why his strength to body weight ratio was one of the greatest of all time. Learn to play the notes that make up the chords. Because if I'm playing chords and I'm playing, I'm mashing all the notes, that doesn't sound very good. So when we move, we want to be able to be precise about which muscles are being used. So this isn't just about which muscles we're activating. This is also about learning to relax the muscles that aren't involved in the movements. And the third major point I want to make about how to apply my mind when I'm training is about proactively recruiting the muscles to begin the motion of something that I'm going through, like a pull-up or a press-up, rather than reactively using the muscles. So when I say this, what do I mean? For me, myself, up until very recently, when I was training at the gym, I would go through the motions of the movement and I'd just sort of set this like rough intention of, oh, I'm going to be standing up as I squat. Oh, I'm going to be pushing with my arms. But I don't really think about pushing, I just think about the upper body raising up. When we train that way, the muscles are reacting to the direction of the body in motion. Now, what I want to do is change that approach. So I'm proactively going, right, I'm going to be dipping now. So let me engage my pecs, my triceps. And that's going to start the motion is the engagement of the muscles rather than moving. And then the muscles just kind of kick in as an afterthought. So it's something that I'm going to be doing, working on a lot more depth in 2023. And I would recommend you try it as well. There's a guy on YouTube that's been inspiring me with this stuff, Red Delta Project. So shout out to you, brother, um, for putting me onto this stuff. I really appreciate your work. So those are the three major ways we can use our mind in training. Mindful, slow, focused training, mindful warrior style. My muscle connection training, so isolated muscle contractions with relaxations of the muscles surrounding the muscle we're intending to contract. And then third and finally, when we're going through movements, proactively engaging the muscles that direct the movement to happen rather than just trying to move our body through space and the muscles reacting to that. The higher human expression of athletic movement with the human body is the fruit trees of the garden. But to get to the fruit trees, we need nitrogen rich soil. We need 
the weeds that are growing there, they're growing there for a reason. We need to allow that to happen. We need to allow those cycles to go through till we're left with the flourishing fruit trees. So for me, applying my mind, slowing things down, thinking about what I'm doing, focused on form, focused on, on, on feeling in the body. These are the practices that will get us to enjoy the sweet fruits of movement. So that's it, my top five pieces of equipment that I will be using to the greatest benefit of myself when I enter a gym in 2023. Much of the things I've mentioned in this video, all the equipment that I'm using here, I go into much greater depth on techniques and tutorials on how to use them, why we use them, how to put them into training uh, in much greater depth on schoolofbiomechanics.com. If you're interested in that, check that out. There's a, a budding private community there of other people that are into this stuff that are learning it as well. Or if you just want to do rope flow, start your rope flow journey now. Great, no greater time than now to start that. My eight week to fluidity course on wearetherope.com. Other than that, if you like the video, please give this video a like. It helps me for the algorithm. It helps me to continue to make this kind of content. I'm gonna make it anyway, but you know, it just it gives your boy a little boost. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.